I'm doing great, even though every day is not fine. But still, I woke up today. Another day they get on my grind. Got me singing, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pay for it, I'm being for it, I'm in. Pay for it, I'm being for it, I'm in. I'm doing great, even though every day is not fine. But still, I woke up today. Another day they get on my grind. Got me singing, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pay for it, I'm being for it, I'm in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pay for it, I'm being for it, I'm in. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Between the Lines presented to you by Live Via Sports. Today, we have a very special show for you guys. We have not only one, but we also have another guest that will be on our show today. We have Kelsha Williams and Def Dufferin Culpepper. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for having us. Now, this should be really interesting because this is all about teamwork. In sports, we're always doing teamwork, so we can see how I work together today. <laughs> Looking forward to all right, so starting with you, Kesha, can you tell us what you do for a living right now? Um, so yeah, so uh, you know, sports agents, uh, that's that's what we both do. Um, you know, we represent baseball clients, uh, we're licensed to represent NBA athletes as of 2019. Um, we're both also licensed attorneys. Um, I'm licensed in the Virgin Islands. Um, and you know, that's basically what we do on the entertainment side. We also represent a couple of authors. Um, so you know, we do a little bit of both. Um sports entertainment and you know how it all intersects with the law a broad range of things you just named just now can you guys tell me um what school did you attend to get your degree in that particular field go ahead Dufferin. sure so um i went to morehouse for undergrad uh there i got my bachelor's in business with a concentration in finance uh minor in economics and then went on to pursue my law degree at charlotte school of law um and so those are my two degrees I catch it. You can go ahead and share as well. Yeah. So, uh, so I went to Syracuse for undergrad, uh, got my degree in economics from there, um, and then uh, went to Charlotte School of Law in 2013, uh, graduated with my, with my law degree in 2016, um, and got licensed um, in the VI bar um, in 2019 as well. Now, we love to see young black men definitely having their degree. So I'll just go ahead and mention I have my degree as well. But nice. that's, great. <laughs> that's great. What was that, what was that in? Oh, my degree is actually in sports science and fitness management from North Carolina A&T State University. Nice. Okay, nice, nice. Right down the street from us. Oh, there we go. I know it. Definitely. That North Carolina love. Definitely. <laughs> All right. So what made you guys decide to choose your profession? You talked about being a sports agent. Go ahead, um, Kelsha. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, we both, uh, you know, always love sports. I mean, for me... Um, as a kid, I knew I always wanted to play, you know, either professionally or, or work in sports in some role, um, you know, in the event I wasn't playing. Um, you know, I either wanted to be, you know, in the front office or, you know, at, a, at an agency someplace. Um, I just remember when I was younger, you know, Duffer and I, uh, we would keep track of like, you know, the trade sign-ins um, from our favorite teams. Uh, you know, we keep, you know, stats. We, you know, this was before like the digital age where everybody have a laptop or a phone where they could write. So, you know, we'd have the little, you know, black and white copy books that we'd write down, right, right. Uh, you know, all this stuff. Um, and, you know, we get together, we talk about it, you know, go back and forth about, you know, whether or not it was a good sign in trade or not. Um, you know, this person's stats. I mean, you know, we, we both, um, you know, uh, you know, as friends growing up, just always, um, you know, we're interested in the not only just the playing of the sport, but also the the front office and the dynamics that go along with it. Now, you mentioned being friends for numerous years. Can you tell us how long you guys know each other, Dufferin? Like, when did you first meet? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was in kindergarten. We, we went to Wesleyan together. Then we went to Calvary together. Then we went to All Saints, where we graduated uh, from high school. So basically, we've been together for as long as I can remember myself. Honestly, we've been brothers for that long. Um, and like Kelsey was just saying, for the previous question, you know, about the collecting the stats, 
we would print all these documents. I remember going to like my father's office and printing all these stats and hanging them on the walls and stuff. And we would go over it constantly. Um, so yeah, you know, we, we go way back. So it, it's nice to be able to, to be in business with somebody that you know, um, that you, that you've been this close with for so many years and, and that you've done so much with, you know? All right. So now uh, you've been friends from kindergarten, more like brothers. Like, uh, you have to have this cohesiveness going on. We're going to really test this team one thing and see what you're both <laughs> thinking. So I hope I really have this, this one mentality growing. Okay. Where you guys can, you know, signal to each other stuff that we need to talk about because I feel like this should be something really good to look forward to. Okay, let's do it. Looking forward to it too. All right, so how long have you guys been in the sports agency field, Dufferin, if you can tell us? Uh, so we started in 2013. Um, at the time, Kelsha was starting law school. I had just gotten out of law school. And so, um, you know, it was an interesting dynamic at that point because he was still balancing school and, and the agency. And then for me, you know, I was out full, full time with the agency, but it was still new to both of us. So, you know, that was that was a very interesting time, those first few years building it up. But um, 2013 was when we started. Now, was there ever a time, because 2013 to 2020 is a long time ago, was there ever a time you guys felt like you didn't want to do this anymore, you wanted to give up? Go ahead, Kelsha. Um, I mean, I, I, I definitely wouldn't say that there was ever a time where, you know, myself or, you know, Dufferin you know, felt like, you know, we should give up. Um, you know, we're both very competitive. Um, so there, there may have been times where, you know, we may have been frustrated where things may not have been moving as fast as we wanted to. Um, but, you know, life has a way of showing you that, you know, you have to be patient with certain things and, you know, everything comes in its own time. Um, so in terms of, you know, giving up or thinking, you know, you know, maybe we made a wrong decision. I don't think we've ever had that thought, um, you know, just always being, you know, competitive and, you know, wanting the best for ourselves. You know, we hold ourselves to a high standard. So, you know, we, we, expect success we plan for success and you know when you know certain things happen you know we have to adjust and you know that's frustrating but you know we still roll with the punches and you know we get what we can done and you know that that's really what we what we've done so far now as you mentioned things always happen within a time frame it might not be your time then it might be your time after so persistence definitely is the key i definitely agree with that and to have a support to have support of somebody else that you know from a long time ago pushing along I think that's one of the key things that might have helped, may have helped you guys stay in the long run in so long. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Now let's get into your business a little bit. What is the name of your business? Um, the name of the agency is All In Sports and Entertainment. Um, kind of the the mission behind it, or like the 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 purpose of the name, is that we know the athletes and the entertainers and anybody else that we represent, they typically give their all in trying to achieve their goal of being, you know, the best in their profession. And so on our end, we want to give them our all as well. And so it, it kind of was a perfect um, name for representing that. Now you said you represent not only athletes, but what other kind of people do you represent um, in your sports agency or in your agency, I should say? Kelsha? Um, so, uh, you know, outside of the, the, the athletes that we do represent, um, we do represent um, a, a couple of authors. Um, some of them are athletes as well, but they've they've branched into uh, into you know having their own book. Um, for example, uh, Julius Jackson, um, you know, world class uh, chef and boxer. Uh, you know, he has his his cookbook, My Modern Caribbean Kitchen. Uh, we also uh, represent an inspirational author, um, Latasha Scott, who um, just recently um, released the the um, the downloadable version of her uh, inspirational quotes called No Peace. Um, that that the the printable hard copy version will be out uh, this Friday, um, and you know we also represent um, Sherman Thomas, um, who's a voice of the lady and men's Bucks basketball team, um, and he has you know a, a book out as well. Um, so you know uh, you know we represent authors um, as well as um, athletes in their um, off the field opportunities. All right, so now, since you're not only representing athletes, but also authors, do you do talk show hosts? I might be looking somebody to sign me. Let's have, that, let's have that conversation. We haven't, but we're definitely open to having that conversation, Shaq. So when you're ready, please give us a call. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds great. Now, what aspects of the athletes or the person on your roster's life do you handle? So, um, you know, the, the crux of what we do typically – is negotiating contracts, looking for endorsement opportunities, those sorts of things. 
Um, something that we also do is we will help to be a sounding board for our clients, um, you know, allowing them to bounce ideas off of us, as well as helping them to seek other professionals for whatever services or products they may be looking for to help advance their careers and as well as their personal life. So we try to be, uh, we, we try not to do too much in terms of getting overextended and not stepping outside of what we're good at, but we still incorporate other professionals um, so that our clients can can get a well-rounded um, slew of services. Now, would you speaking of the um, the athletes that are on your roster, do you represent any Virgin Islands athletes besides the ones you already named? Or you uh, can go ahead and actually name the whole roster if you would like. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, uh, we do. Um, so we we currently represent Jabari Blash, um, who, who's playing his second season in Japan right now. Um, we also represent Akil Morris. Um, Deshaun Lake, uh, you know, they're both, um, you know, former um, um, prospects in the Braves and Yankees system, respectively. Um, you know, it's kind of a little, um, you know, hectic right now with the coronavirus canceling the minor league season. Um, but, you know, we were very confident in 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 their progress and, you know, how they were throwing this offseason um, to possibly seeing them um, in the minors this year. Um, and, you know, that's kind of where sports is going now with being up in the air. Um, but we also represent and have worked with um, uh, Simone Ware, who is a uh, fitness uh, uh, instructor who, who basically, she uh, grew up in St. Croix, um, um, lived in St. Thomas. Uh, she has her own digital series on BT. It was called Mad Different Workouts. Um, and she also has a Fit Queen workout program that, that's really popular. You may know her by her um, Instagram handle of Capri Curves. Um, she's been around the world hosting her Capri Curves boot camp. Um, she's designed her own body suits. Um, that you know will be available this Friday um, exclusively on her website. So we do work with a, a good amount of um, VI um, athletes. And now uh, you said a lot of names that I'm very familiar with, but two definitely are significant to me, both Akeel Morris and Deshaun Lake. I actually played baseball with both of those guys growing up. So nice. it's nice to see them represented by someone who's going to take great care of them. Definitely. Nice. Yeah, definitely two talented guys. Um, and one other, Julius Jackson, I know Kelsha mentioned him earlier. Um, with him, we work primarily with his brand uh, as far as his his cooking and, and some of his boxing, but mostly his brand on the on the cooking side of things. Now, we spoke about the, the VI signees that you have on your roster, but do you have anybody that's not from the Virgin Islands signed to your roster as well? Kelsha? Yeah, we do. Um, we represent um, a, a minor league baseball player, Enrique Valdez. Um, he's originally from the, the Dominican Republic. Um, he's a, a minor league prospect in the um, Kansas City Royals organization. Um, he won their uh, DSL, which is Dominican uh, Summer League um, Player of the Year in 2018, and also the Arizona League um, uh, Player of the Year in 2018 as well. Uh, we also represent uh, Blake Grant Parks. Uh, he was a catcher, formerly in the Rays organization. Um, he's out of Yuba City, California. Um, he's currently playing in the Atlantic Association um, as we speak. He had a great year last year, and we're looking forward to you know him having another good year um, and just you know big things for him as well. So you know we we do represent uh, athletes outside of the Virgin Islands, um, and you know as long as you're willing to work, um, you have a good head on your shoulders, and you know you you think that you have what it takes. You know we will definitely open to to representing somebody. Now that's great that you have a, a bigger brand than just the VI market too. So now you can get your names out there and you, you in time, you will be one of those top sports agencies um, that are looking to sign athletes. So that's definitely a good thing to get your foot in the door with other athletes outside of the VI market. Agreed. Now, yeah. would, you, would you guys recommend athletes to take the professional overseas route as well as playing in the large, um, the large leagues in America? That has been a, a big topic of conversation, I think, for the last few years and, and especially for the past few months um, with a lot of the leagues changing their rules, the, the U.S. leagues, that is, changing rules um, and, and changing systems like like baseball, cutting back on the minor league teams. And, and as the opportunities overseas increase as well, um, those leagues are very competitive, both on the field and then as well as in, in terms of financial. So... Um, there are opportunities there. Uh, what, what we would say is it depends for the client. You know, each circumstance is different and, and what they may expect or what they would want is different. So we won't say that 
every client should pursue something like that. But it, it is definitely an option that they should consider um, because there there is a lot of opportunities overseas to do just as well, if not better than than playing here in the U.S. Now, what would be the process for at, at the looking for an agent to join your company or join your agency? Kelsha? So, so typically, um, you know, if, if an athlete, um, you know, reached out to us, we would, you know, schedule a meeting with them, uh, you know, before, before Corona, we, we'd probably want to, you know, sit down in person with them. Um, but, you know, we would, you know, want to get to, to know who they are, you know, who they are as an athlete, who they are as a person, you know, f- figure out, you know, what. Really drive for to get out of not only the sport and life expectations are of us as agents, you know, what, what are they looking for us to provide? Um, so, you know, we, we really like to have that uh, conversation with an athlete before even agreeing um, you know, to, to represent them. Um, and then after that, uh, Dufferin and I would then, you know, discuss amongst ourselves whether we feel, um, you know, this athlete is a right fit for us as an agency. Um, I think one of the, 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 the main things that we've um, di- discovered the fir- from the initial time when we started in 2013 was that there, there's going to be, you know, a lot of athletes out there. And some of them, you know, you know they could be as talented as they are, but some of them just may not be a right fit for you. And, you know, what you don't want is to represent somebody where, you know, either you or them have, you know, unfair expectations of what will be provided. Um, so we, we try to do a good job of making sure that, you know, any athlete that we represent um, understands that, you know, we're, we're going to work as hard as we can, but we expect that same thing from our athletes as well. Um, and so, you know, once we feel that, you know, that the, you know, the athlete, you know, the good person, that they're committed, they're dedicated, um, you know, we feel it's a good fit. Then, you know, we normally then, um, you know, send a contract to them for them to review, um, you know, tell them, you know, have it reviewed by an attorney that they trust as well. Um, so that there's no issues of, you know, of, of them thinking that, you know, we, you know, taking advantage or anything like that. Um, we, you know, we, we, we tend to, to, to express, you know, full transparency, um, especially seeing the type of relationship between the athlete and, um, and, and agents. So, um, that that's pretty much where it would go, um, you know, until up until they sign that contract, and you know after that, then we get to work. All right. So since this is a partnership, um, we work. You guys came on our show to provide great information for us, and we want to help you guys to get your brand out there as well. Could you provide some contact information in case an athlete would like to get in contact with you guys? Could go ahead and do that, Duffin. Sure, absolutely. So if you want to reach us, we can be reached at contact c o n t a c t at all in S E that's a L L I N S as in Sam E as in Edgar.com. That's probably the best way to, um, to get in touch with us. Okay. That's good. I think that's some valuable information people can definitely use. And just seeing this show right now gives more insight into the sports agency world. Maybe somebody would like to follow your footsteps as well. So this is definitely something that's different, but it still involves sports the way we like to see it involved. Now, absolutely. Yeah. Have you guys been able to sponsor any events at home or are you planning on doing that? Uh, you can go ahead, Dufferin. Yeah, so, um, you know, we, and Kelsha, you can, you can get in on this question too. Um, actually, I'll let you start and then, and then I'll come in behind. <laughs> that, that works. Um, so, uh, you know, we've, we've been involved um, with some, some events, uh, you know, sp- specifically from, uh, some of the athletes on our roster, um, just, you know, starting off with Julius, um, you know, he, he works, um, basically with, um, my brother's workshop. Um, so I know after the, the hurricanes, um, Irma Maria, um, he was pretty, um, um, integral in terms of, you know, their ability to provide assistance to the community, um, whether it be through food or just, you know, you know, just services that they may have needed. Um, he also helped, uh, uh, organize and, and, and participate in a fundraiser um, called Party for a Purpose to raise um, funds for them um, with uh, Blueprint Promotions and Marcus Brown down there. Um, he he's he's helped in, in other ways in terms of uh, he he hosted a grilled cheese competition um, I think back in 2018 or early 2019 um, to raise money for Ella's Hope, um, which is a nonprofit foundation uh, in in St. Thomas. Um, so we, we've also sponsored um, uh, little league players to 
to be able to travel to Orlando uh, to play in a Little League tournament. Um, that was something that we were both proud of just because, you know, we obviously, you know, played Little League. Uh, we understand, you know, how, you know, how, how, you know, finances are and how it may be, you know, financially challenging for, for a lot of kids. And so, you know, we felt that, you know, great to be able to, to do our part to at least send one kid. We hope to do more in the future. Um, that's always a goal to give back. Um, and, you know, you know, we've, we have some events that, you know, before coronavirus, uh, we were hoping to, to get underway, um, particularly in uh, December of 2020. Um, but, you know, just looking at the safety of not only who we're bringing down, but more so the safety of the locals and, um, you know, our fellow Virgin Islanders, uh, we decided to push it back to December of 2021. Um, you know, we had some some very, you know, good conversations with a lot of public um, and private um, sp sponsorships and supporters. Um, you know, one person we, we talked to um, um, briefly about it was uh, Senator Javon James, who you guys had on the show last week. Um, we, we also talked to some other senators briefly, um, Senator Blyden, Senator Gregory, uh, Senate candidate Jonathan Tucker was another person we talked to. Um, and all of them, you know, really expressed interest in what we're doing. Um, and we're hoping to be a part of it, um, possibly, and, and, and helping, um, you know, get that done and push it forward. Um, so we hope to continue those conversations again, um, you know, later this year and into 2021 um, to get, uh, you know, that, that um, event going. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to bring, you know, more events to the Virgin Islands. Um, obviously, you know, that's home. So that's, you know, we, we primarily that's where our heart is. And, you know, we care about the people and we just like to, you know, do our part um, in any way that we can. I definitely do you have anything to add to that one? Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with Kelsha um on, on just about everything there. You know, it's it's a blessing to be able to work with clients who have a heart for the community, who want to give back, you know, their time, of their resources, like you mentioned, Julius, um, Jabari Blash with his foundation, the Jacoby uh, Blash Foundation, you know, he has those clinics uh, every year and he has a lot of great ideas. I, I mean, I can't wait till it actually comes to fruition, the things that he wants to do in the Virgin Islands um, is gonna be so impactful. So, you know, as agents, we, we are able to help our clients to achieve some of those goals. Um, many times we're in the background, which is fine. We're, we're completely happy with that because the client comes first and they should be at the forefront. Um, so, you know, we're happy to, to be able to assist and, and give back to our community. And then from an individual level, you know, as we continue to grow, like Kelsha was saying, we wanna do events like the one that we're planning for next year to be able to, to bring more opportunity to the Virgin Islands, to bring more inspiration uh, to, to people who wanna get into the sports business uh, and don't necessarily know how to go about it or, or just need some recommendations or some other people to, to give uh, some advice to them. So um, yeah, we definitely look forward to continuing to give back to the community and, and do a lot more in the years to come. And that's great. Just giving back to your community in any way possible, whether it's time, money, whatever it is, it's always something that you can be proud of. And it always makes a big impact, whether you know it or not. So that's definitely great to see you guys giving back to the community that raised you guys as well. Absolutely. Thanks, Ian. I, know I heard you guys spoke about finance and um, business earlier. Do you have any financial advice for kids that are in college or recently graduated college? Could Go ahead, Kelsha. Um, I mean, you know, like, like Dufferin said earlier, um, you know, every athlete or kid's, you know, situation is different. Um, so, you know, just general personal advice would be, um, you know, it, you know, college to me is a time where you, you know, figure out, you know, who you are and what you want to do. And, you know, it's, you know, for the student athlete, it's definitely even more challenging because you have to balance so much more on your schedule. Um, but, you know, if at all possible, I would say to, you know, try as best to, you know, kind of figure out, you know, what you want to do in life and, you know, kind of think about, you know, what you want, you know, your college degree or experience to get you possibly off the field and after um, you graduate. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they think, you know, you, you're playing sports and you're, and you're going to college, that that's all, you know, that you're going to do. Um, but, you know, there are a lot more, you know, athletes who, who didn't make it to the, to the highest level. Um, so, you know, you still want to have that well-rounded approach where, you know, even after your playing days are over or, or off the field during the off season, you know, you want to have something that's fulfilling, something that you're passionate about. So, you know, use college to do that. Um, and just also remember that, you know, it's, it's student athlete, student comes first. Um, so, you know, academics are important, um, you know, even for a student athlete. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of stories out there of people who were, you know, really talented. 
Um, and, you know, because of, you know, academics, they weren't able to showcase their talents maybe at a, at a, as on as big a stage as they, they could have. And, you know, academics is, is one way that you can ensure that not only, um, you know, will you set yourself up for success, you know, in the future after you play or even if you don't play um, professionally, but also, you know, getting to, you know, those top programs, you know, whether it be, um, you know, Morehouse, whether, it, whether you know, Howard, um, you know, UNC, Duke, you know, all those top programs still, you know, stress academics first. Um, so, you know, that that's really would be my advice in terms of, you know, student athletes in school. And that's a great way to look at it. Dufferin, do you have anything to add with that? Yeah, I, I agree with what Kelsey said. Um, I, I would add that invest in your financial literacy. I think one of the biggest things that we lack um, as a community and, and most people in general, I should say, is not really having a true understanding of how finances work. Um, you know, people can write a check or they can, they can do debits and credits, the basics, but um, not really understanding the language of, of business, not understanding finance. I think that's crucial because, um, you know, with, with having that under your belt, it, it presents a lot more opportunities. Like Kelsey was saying, as far as going to college, you, you don't want to necessarily run up debt unnecessarily. There are some schools that you can go to that would provide you with the same type of uh, learning experience without having to, you know, come with a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. So if you could, if you could figure that out, figure out good debt, bad debt, assets versus liabilities and then work towards getting towards financial freedom, um, creating businesses, doing different things like that. You know, those types of experiences will, will definitely help you in the long run to, to provide freedom for you and your family, uh, financial freedom, that is. All right. the, the information that you guys are giving is high quality information right now. Um, we're going to tone it down a little bit, though. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with more with Kelsha and Dufferin of Arlen Entertainment.
Uh, we're back live with Between the Lines featuring Dufferin and Kelsha here with All In Entertainment. Now, guys, we're getting away from your careers. We're getting into your, your athletic days, your, your little league days, your B basketball. We're going to talk about some of that right now. Now, did either, either of you guys play sports growing up? You can start with you, Dufferin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sports was, was life. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. So when I I was thinking I was about four or so, and my mom took me out to, they had like the, the Pee Wee League. When you were, were first starting, you would um, try out for the teams, at least back then. And we went to the field and, and essentially I didn't have much of baseball gear because at that point and I was new. And uh, one of the coaches was telling my mom, she's like, oh, you need to, to get him a cup. So she was like, okay, I'll, I'll get him a cup. So she went to the concession stand, brought like a plastic cup back and was like, okay, I got a cup. And, um, you know, obviously he, he meant like a protect, like protective gear. So that's how I kind of got my start in sports was, was through that. But, um, yeah, definitely played baseball, played uh, basketball, played football, flag football, that is, because I, I definitely wasn't about to get hit by some of those guys back home. I know um, a lot of people play tackle football, but I just wasn't one of them. And then played a little bit of volleyball as well. That cup story might go down in the live right, <laughs> right there. Like I've seen it before, but to hear it again, it's something that always happens. Yep. It's definitely always funny every time. Yep. How about you, <laughs> How about yeah, you, you know, you like Dover said, you know, played sports all growing up. Yeah, uh, I said, you know, played uh, baseball, basketball, uh, flag football, volleyball. Um, you know, wanted to play tackle football, but you know, everybody else. You know they were they were growing bigger and i i just wasn't you know getting to that size so i was like you know what i'll, I'll play it safe on this one um but you know really enjoyed um you know all the the, the friendships the, the the memories um you know all the other the the lessons that you know playing sports taught um it, it is something that you know really is a big part of my life even up to now um so i, I really do have to you know credit uh you know playing growing up in terms of you know understanding more um, you know, how, how sports work and, you know, just the, the joy that sports brings to a lot of people. Now, just the fact that we had the two of you guys on here today, did you guys possibly play for any, on any teams together? Yep, definitely, definitely. We, um, we played on the, was it 1998, Kelsha? I can't remember the year, but I think it was 1998, the uh, Junior League. I, I mean, I'm sorry, Junior Lions. Yeah. Junior League champion team. We were undefeated that year. Um, yeah. Shout out to Coach David, Coach Rupert David, Coach uh, Coach Olive. Um, yeah, we, we ran the table, went undefeated in Pee Wee League. Yeah, that year. <laughs> had a great team that year. I think that was, and then we also played in school teams together when we went to All Saints. Um, and we played. I think those were the teams, right? We played together on a uh, Pirates. Yeah, Pirates yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We played on Pirates with um, Coach Smith, Dara Smith, Bruce Smith, Kevin Pemberton. Um, yeah, we, we enjoyed our time playing together. We had good teams, good camaraderie, like Kelsha was saying. And uh, yeah, definitely enjoyed enjoyed playing together. I just want to put it out there that um, we don't really care about Pirates because I'm an Archers man. I play on Archers in Little League, so we don't really care for Pirates. Uh, Shane, go ahead and, and cancel his, cancel his uh, mic. Cancel his mic, Shane. Shane is also a Pirates man, so he, he, knows, he knows what it is. <laughs> see, see? Already canceled, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how far did you guys make it? Were any of you able to move on to the next level while playing sports? Um, fortunately for me, I was able to play in college. Uh, like I said, I went to Morehouse, walked on my freshman year along with uh, LaShawn Letsum, uh, who, who also is from the Virgin Islands. He was my roommate in college and, and graduated. There he is, graduated with him out of All Saints. Um, that seems so long ago just to see the picture. But yeah, um, College baseball was interesting. It was it taught me a lot. Even in, in now being an agent, I learned a lot then from the training that's necessary to, to play at the highest level. And, and I played division two, so I didn't make it quite as far as I would want to, as far as playing D1 or even playing professionally. I got injured my junior year and that kind of derailed everything that um that I had planned in terms of playing professionally. But um I learned a lot playing playing sports and, and playing college sports specifically. How about you, Kelsha? Did you were you able to move on to the next level? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I got as far as intramural basketball. <laughs> um, in Syracuse. Um, I got that a couple years after Carmelo, but uh, you know, by the time I got there, I still ain't had any shot to you know get on the Syracuse team. But now I, the highest level I played at um was high school. 
Um, but you know, I picked up bowling now, so you know that point on my you know hope <laughs> and athletic pro dreams in the bowling <laughs> basket right now. So <laughs> bowling is one sport where people think that they're really good because they bowl like you know two hundred and something games, and you see these guys on TV with three hundred games all the time, and then you realize yeah. you're not really good. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna give you guys the opportunity to shout out any of your um your teams that you played for growing up. Whether you want to shout out your coach, just the organization, go ahead, Kelsha. You can start from the bottom, start from P. Go up. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, you know, we talked about you know the Junior Lions uh, uh, team. Uh, like I said, we went undefeated. Uh, you know, Coach David, Coach Aleve. Um, uh, my uncle was also a coach, uh, Fitzroy Williams. Uh, he kind of you know was the first person to get me into baseball. Um, you know, shout out to to the Pirates uh, little league team. Like I said, you know, Miss Smith, she was a great coach. Uh, you know, one of the one of the few or only, um, you know, female coaches at, at around that time. Um, and you know, she was great. Uh, Bruce Smith, Kevin Pemberton, um, you know, um, Mariners uh, from from junior senior league. Um, you know, coach coach Audie Henneman, uh, Gray Poe, um, CB, all of them, John, um, and. You know, just want to shout out all you know the teammates, friends that we have. You know, people doing stuff in sports now. You know, people just doing other things in life. Um, you know, it, you know, it takes a community, and everybody has to play their part. You know, it may not be in sports, but you know, if you're you know providing opportunities for other people, if you're, um, you know, helping uh, people in any way, uh, like you know, shout out to you for everything that you know everybody does for for making the Virgin Islands community what it is. Uh, oh, before I forget, I, I do want to shout out. Um, I, I only play, played for him um, during school league and All Saints baseball, uh, Coach Butte. Um, I, I, he, he was one of my favorite coaches to play for. I always wanted to play for him. Um, but before he coached All Saints, uh, for some reason, he could never find space for me on, my, on his teams. I kind of felt, you know, that was maybe a little, you know, a little suspect. But, you know, I forgave him for it. But, you know, Coach Butte was also a, a good coach um, um, back when we were playing baseball. <laughs> How about you, Dufferin? You sound like you have a, um, a long list of stuff over there, too. <laughs> so I, I actually do have a, a long list. I try to write down as many coaches as I can remember so that I, I didn't um, forget anyone. So please forgive me if, if I don't mention your name, but um, I'm going to do my best. So from my starting in, in Wee or yeah, it was Wee at that time. I, my first coach was Billy for the Supersonics. Um, I followed that up with I, I was coached by the Kings, uh, Attorney King and his family with the Blue Jays. Uh, also, like Kelsha said, and I think the beautiful St. Thomas is that you get to be coached by so many people. Um, and, and so there's a lot of overlap. So many of the people that Kelsha mentioned, you know, obviously coached me as well. Um, but some other people, Sydney Isaac uh, with Pals, uh, and I'm, I'm looking at a list here, uh, Buki Martin uh, for, through some all-star teams, uh, Michael Butte, like, like Kelsha mentioned. I was thinking about it today in preparation for this. And I was like, wow, Butte has been doing the Explorers program for over 25 years. And, and for those of you who don't know about that program, you know, they take children, usually at the little league age, to um, various tournaments in the States and, and other places as well um, to compete. And that was the first time that I had played off of St. Thomas. So that exposed me to a lot. Um, Darren Canton, who has a program for, for older kids, high school. Um, I was part of the first Future Stars team that he had that, that he took us to pro uh, days in Florida, and we were able to be exposed to scouts, college and professional, and he does the, the coaching uh, day in the Virgin Islands uh, every year, uh, barring you know, anything catastrophic happening. And um, you know something like that, many of the athletes that we represent actually went through Darren's program and, and Butte as well, and all the other coaches that we listed. So I think it's beautiful how everything comes full circle, where we were able to play with these players, some of them play with them, and um, be coached by some of the coaches they were coached by, and then now be able to represent them. Um, so yeah, so that's on the baseball side. On basketball, I played zero tolerance with uh, Magic, and um, around the field, like we, we with that team. I remember having good practices and games there, um, and even with All Saints, uh, Jarvis coached us for um, a few things, and um, he would bring us there to practice. So those are always good, good, um, good times as well. So, and all the other coaches, like I said, who, who've had a hand in my development or, or in playing, you know, I definitely appreciate all of you. And I definitely love our small community. Um, a lot of people don't get to cherish it the way we do, but just having that small community where we, where 
in where we see these same people over and over. We see them often. We see them today. We might see them tomorrow. See them in a grocery store. See them at a baseball field. It's just nice to have that close circle where the community is always close together here. Definitely, definitely. Um, I also wanted to shout out Coach Jarvis again. I know he does a great work on um, with the tackle program. Um, when he was doing that, um, he also coached us for basketball as well. Um, you know, he 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 does you know a, a great job. Um, involved in the coaching. Um, ranks down there, especially for football. So you know, can't forget Jarvis. So definitely, a lot of those coaches that you guys mentioned also coached me as well. So it's 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 the the group of individuals that impacted our life. They're still around. They're still coaching. They still want to play if they could play. So it's just good right. to see up and around. Them, right? Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. All right, now, so can you guys give me your best stats for a particular game or a season that you guys had? I'll start with you, Kelsha. Definitely may have some time to think about it. <laughs> yeah, a lot to decide from. Um, I mean, I remember um, we had a tournament, uh, and I think they were playing out. The to- whole tournament was in Antilles. Uh, and we played. Uh, this was called better time. I had 34 points that game. I think that's my highest uh, basketball total. Um, and uh, just, you know, best season I can remember um, was in, in Little League. Um, I think it was my uh, last year, was pitch of the year for the Pirates. Um, so, you know, we um, we had won the Thanksgiving tournament that year as well. Um, so that, that, was, that was pretty memorable. Um, and other than, you know, my, uh, you know, bowling scores recently, that's about it for me. <laughs> You know, what do those bowling scores look like? Uh, there's a couple of 200 games in there, uh, averaging around 150, 160. But, you know, I, I feel, you know, more consistent time. Once I'm able to, to, to find some time to get back out there, I think, you know, those, those will jump up. I just need to get the time, man. <laughs> uh, we're looking forward to seeing you on the pro circuit then. Yeah, we got to do something about those shoes. Though. Bowling shoes are ugly for some reason. But, you know, if, if I do make it, that'll be one of the first things I think. <laughs> I got to have something, you know, better looking in those shoes, you know, especially for our people, man. <laughs> All right, Dufferin. He Kelsha <laughs> mentioned 34 points, so you got to beat that. 34 points. I don't think I've ever scored that much in a basketball game, to be honest with you. But um, the most memorable, I mean, I had some good college games. But for me, the most memorable um, game was actually in St. Thomas. Uh, it was junior league. I think I was 14 at the time, 14 or 15. I, I can't recall. But we were playing the Falcons. And I, my primary position was shortstop, but I was pitching that day. And I ended up with 15 strikeouts um, over six innings. So that that really stands out to me as as a memorable moment, memorable memorable game. We have thirty four points by a basketball player, fifteen strikeouts by a baseball, football, and basketball player. Those are some stats that aren't normal. Honestly, those are definitely above average stats. So that's great. <laughs> yep. All right, can't do it now. Can't do it now. <laughs> I mean, the, the way you sound, you sound like you have you have a future in a, being an agent, man. <laughs> You never know, we may have to have a conversation after this um this recording. It sounds good. <laughs> all right, we're going to move on to our interactive segment now. We're going to test your teamwork, see if all your little compatible here and there, see what you guys okay. think. You might be different, might be the same. Yeah. After that, we'll open up the live to questions. So you can go ahead and send your questions right now, or we will have them queued up, ready for them right after this segment. All right, so the segment is called A Few of My Favorite Things. All right? Okay. okay. So we're gonna go one and one. Each of you get a chance to um to tell us what a few what are what that favorite thing might be. All right, so we start with you, Dufferin. Your favorite subject in school? History. Um, and the, his, the reason it was history is because it, it, it isn't the name, right? His story. So I, I was always fascinated by how history wasn't always necessarily exactly how things occurred. So think about. The, the time that we're in right now, you know, when people are concerned about like the, the the Columbus story and different things like that, that's now coming to light. Like I always wondered about that. Like, how could you say Christopher Columbus discovered the new world when there were people there? You know, so so history was always fascinating to me because it, it showed me that whoever was victorious and whatever it was is the person that wrote the history, which is his story. So of course it's gonna be slanted towards whatever narrative they, you know, want to to provide. So history was always interesting because because of that and then also because it showed you clues to what to expect in the future so you would read about things in the past and then you would see those things repeat themselves in the future as well um, so i always found history really fascinating what about you Kelsha? what's your favorite subject in school um uh, uh, it is a tie between history and math <laughs> um for me you know with, with history it was more so finding out 
you know, how you got to where you are today. Um, and so I love, you know, researching, um, you know, historical figures, stuff like that. Um, it, it really sank into me. Um, my mother's maiden name is Toussaint. Um, so I, you know, I believe I was eight at the time I found out, um, you know, I was a descendant of Toussaint Louverture who helped um, lead the, fir the first and successful slave rebellion um, in Haiti and actually freed Haiti um, from slavery in the 1800s. So after that, I, I was sold on history and just find out as much as I can about, you know, you know, world events, um, you know, you know, great um, African um, people, you know, Virgin Islands people. So I always love hit history on um, just math. Um, you know, I've always been good at numbers. Um, so, you know, I, I loved math, um, you know, being able to count and stuff like that. Uh, you know, so those would be my two favorite subjects. Now, your favorite sport, sound with you, Kelsha. My favorite sport would be baseball. Um, it, it's what I played the longest. Um, I, you know, it, it's just something about, you know, I, I feel like just, you know, the, the, the game overall, um, you know, just understanding it. Just, you know, kind of like the chess moves involved between, you know, managers, um, you know, just the, the, the overall for me, um, you know, strategy of the game. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the excitement of, you know, hitting a home run and making a, you know, a great play. Um, while it doesn't, might not have like the constant action of, you know, football and basketball. Right. Um, for me, it is, it's just something that to me combines a lot of different aspects that I, I find enjoyable. So that, that would be it for me. No. After this interview and the stuff you've been saying, I thought you were going to say your favorite sport is bowling, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been doing it long enough, but I mean, if, if I get on the PBA tour, I, you know, get some, some, some bowling shoes endorsements, you know, it might, it might, it might jump baseball. <laughs> uh, what about you, Duffin? Your favorite sport? Same. Ba baseball, the sport that I played the most growing up. Um, and, and just being out there, honestly, is, is, it's refreshing to me when you're out there on, on the field and, you know, the pitcher is getting ready to wind up and just, just being in the ballpark is, is invigorating for me. So um, definitely baseball. All right, your favorite overall sports team, Dufferin? Have to be at the Atlanta Braves. It's a, it, I'll say this, it's close. It's a tie between the Braves and the Lakers. Um, grew up a huge fan of both teams. Um, but I, I will say I'll give the nod to the Braves simply because they were my team first. So I'll go ahead and... Um, and say the Braves, Atlanta Braves. All right, I almost had to kick you off the show for being a Pirates man, but now that you say the Braves and I love the Braves, you can definitely stay. I might invite you back for another show, actually. Okay, let's do that, too. <laughs> I saw Kelsha shaking his head when you mentioned those two teams. Kelsha, who's your favorite sports team? Um, you know, even though baseball is my favorite sport, I think the the my favorite team of all time um, would be the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I'm a huge 49ers fan. Um, you know, I've, I've been to you know a bunch of games. Um, you know, even when, you know, plays the, 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 you know, see them at the Super Bowl and stuff like that. Um, the, the reason I was shaking my head about, uh, you know, his choice, I'm a Braves fan as well, but, you know, definitely where we differ and have, you know, the, I would say majority of our arguments stem from, you know, his love for the Lakers who I, you know, from a personal side, professionally, I mean, if they sign one of our clients then you know, they, they'd be the greatest organization, they're a great organization, but, you know, personally, you know, I, I um, you know, have, have, you know, a lot of bad, bad memories of the Lakers. I'm, I'm a Portland Trailblazer fan, probably the only Portland Trailblazer fan many people know in person. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I remember um, during the, uh, the, the Western Conference Finals when, you know, the Blazers and Lakers went seven games. And, you know, I just knew we were going to play the Pacers in the finals that year. We were up by 15 with five minutes left. And then, you know... Kobe, rest in peace. Him and Shaq did their thing, you know, the whole hand in the air stuff. With uh, man, I, I was I, I was like eleven at a time, went to bed crying and everything. So you know, I, I, from since then, you know, I kind of you know never never liked any any Lakers. So that, that's why I was shaking my head. No, usually everybody says that twenty twenty is a really bad year, but you had a horrible year, Kelsha. You lost the Super Bowl. You have the worst <laughs> year right now. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it was rough, man. It was rough. It was rough. But, you know, the good thing about it, you know, we still have a solid team. So, you know, if, if they do, um, you know, end up getting a season in this year, you know, I like our chances, um, you know, bringing back, you know, most of our same team. Um, you know, that familiarity to me could give you a leg up over teams that, you know, brought in a lot of new players at different positions. So, you know, I, I still think we have a chance, um, you know, so we'll, we'll see what happens in, in 2020. All right, your favorite hobby outside of sports, because we know sports might be number one for everybody. 
Duffin, your favorite hobby outside of sports? By far is learning. And, and my wife sometimes gets upset with me at this. And, and, and it's interesting because I, I'm the, I'm the person that you will ask me a question. If I don't know the answer, I'll start looking it up and I'll search it. Mm -hmm. I'll probably know something about it a little bit, but then I will like dig into it. So if you, if you were like, why do rabbits jump backwards? I'd be like, I don't know, but I would then research that and I get down a rabbit hole, no pun intended and figure out why they actually jump backwards. I, I just like learning new things. I like figuring out things. Um, I like having knowledge. So mm -hmm. That's I, I guess I would say I would say that's a hobby of mine, but definitely learning. I, I just love to learn. Now that's definitely a different answer than I expected, and that's actually a great answer. Um, I tend to do the same thing, so I can understand what you mean. And now that you say that, I might actually say that uh, that's my favorite hobby as well. Yeah, right? yeah. What about you, Kelsha? Um, you know, my my favorite thing outside of 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 you know sports, favorite hobby would honestly be spending time with you know family, friends, people I love. Um, you know, I'm a very social person, um, you know, and you know, I just love being around, you know, the, the people in my life who I value, um, you know, I, you know, my thing is, you know, time isn't promised to anybody, um, you know, you never know when it's your time. So, you know, I, I generally believe, um, you know, in spending as much time with the people you care about as possible, um, you know, so, you know, spending time with my wife, uh, my son, um, you know, I have another son due, um, supposed to be due to like 16. So, you know, family is growing, but, you know, even, you know, friends who I consider family, um, you know, even, you know, close family, you know, just love being in those environments and, you know, making memories. Um, and, you know, that that's one of the things that I'm hoping that, you know, as the agency grows, um, you know, it allows me to, you know, still do, you know, good things, you know, for pure people and the community, but also allows me to, you know, kind of set my schedule where I can always have time to devote, um, you know, to spending time with family, which is something I enjoy. Um, I feel like, you know, too much times we get caught up in, you know, the rat race of life and, you know, working as hard as we can, which is great, you know, but, you know, we also need to do, you know, really take some time to, to really, you know, value, you know, what's, what's, what's important, uh, you know, at least to me, which is, you know, family, the people in your life, people you love, cause you know, you know, life is fragile and you just never know. So uh, that would be my favorite hobby. Favorite food, Kelsha? Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely lobster. Lobster, Dufferin? Uh, chicken Alfredo. Chicken Alfredo, lobster. Okay, okay. Something different. <laughs> Dufferin, your favorite athlete? Whew. That's a tough... I, I would say, as far as the full package, um, Kobe Bryant. But as far as on the field, Jerry Rice. I like that. That's a, that's a, that's a good one there. Yeah. Kelcher, how about you? You, you see how in sync it is. My favorite athlete of all time is Jerry Rice. Um, he's basically the reason why I became a 49ers fan. Um, I remember my mother bought me a, a a book one time, and it was about Jerry Rice and you know his you know how he you know became who he was, started from like his childhood. Um, you know catching bricks with his father, stuff like that. Um, so you know just that work ethic and you know what he was able to accomplish that you know. I don't think, you know, some of his receiver records will, will be broken anytime soon. So he would definitely be, um, you know, my favorite, you know, athlete of all time. Dufferin, your favorite sports movie? Ooh, Rookie of the Year. That was a quick answer. I, I expected a little <laughs> delay. You know, you'd have to go to your memory bank sometimes, but that was a, that was a yeah. quick one. Rookie of the Year. It's, it's funny, it's witty. You know, it's... You're, you're a kid watching that as a kid wanting to be a pro athlete. You know, it's one of those things like, oh, if I break my arm, I could start pitching 95 miles per hour. That's cool. Or 100 miles or whatever it was. I, I didn't venture out and do it, but, you know, it's, it's definitely, uh, it was my favorite sports movie. That's definitely a movie, like, as a kid, you definitely want to look up to because it was a kid doing amazing things. <laughs> yep. Yep. How about you, Kelsha? Uh, for me, it'd be Remember the Titans. Um, you know, I, I love, you know, again, you know, mixture of, you know, football, which is obviously a sport I, I love. Um, and also, you know, just the historical context of, you know, what was going on, um, you know, back during those times and how, you know, you know, it was still, you know, a struggle in terms of, you know, race relations, um, but also how, you know, it, it can be overcome. And, you know, I don't want to trivialize anything by saying, you know, sports is a way to, you know, end, you know, race relations, you know, or racial issues or anything like that. But, you know, the fact that, you know, it had a lot of, you know, prominent real life, you know, historical figures who were able to overcome um, not only just, you know, odds on the field, but, you know, everything that was thrown at them off the field, um, especially for, for you know, black football players, um, black athletes. Um, that's why that's one of my favorite movies. 
All right, sounds good. So you guys survived the few of my favorite things interactive segment. Now we're going to get back to the question that were asked on the, the live stream okay. for you guys to answer. So one of the questions was, what about the athletes that start playing but want to get back into action? Yeah, we've actually worked with, with some of those athletes um, in the past. Um, top of mind, Jermaine Cotton, uh, when, he, when he was trying to make his return to pro ball, we, um, you know, worked with him, got him a few workouts in, in Arizona and, and Florida as well um, for him to showcase his, his talents. So we're always open, particularly for VI athletes and, and honestly for any athlete who has the potential and, and you know, for whatever reason, whether it be injuries or a, a, a bad situation they were in with, as, in terms of the teams they were with and, and players being in front of them. So they didn't really get the best opportunity to, to show their best self. Um, you know, we're always open to working with those athletes as well. Kind of go through that same process that Kelsha discussed earlier of sitting down with them and, and discussing their goals, seeing if they're a good fit for us, we're a good fit for them, um, and, and definitely trying to help them to achieve those goals if if all else is, um, you know, aligned. Another question from the viewers. How do you make contact with potential athletes? Do you go to major events, especially baseball and other sports? Um, yeah, so we we do um, you know a lot of traveling in terms of you know seeing players. Um, you know we, we go to you know showcases. Um, we, we've been to a lot of showcases. We go to you know obviously you know games. Um, it, it's a little uh, tricky in terms of you know each each league in terms of let's say you know uh, baseball and, and and basketball. You know they have different requirements as to when um, you know you can make contact with 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 um, potential um, athletes who are looking to go pro. Um, you know, when you could do it, how, how much contact, how, how you could contact them. Um, so we, we definitely always, um, you know, try to stay within, you know, the rules so that we don't, you know, not only for, for our protection, but also for the athletes, because the, the last thing that we would want um, is, you know, for our actions to basically, you know, make a, a kid ineligible um, um, in any way, shape or form. Um, so so that, that usually the, the biggest thing would be to go seeing the player play. Um, if, if somebody, you know, tells us, you know, usually a family member or a friend or a coach, you know, say, hey, you know, I have this kid, you know, I think you should check out, you know, we go and do that. Um, we also do, um, you know, have regular meetings where we um, discuss, um, you know, areas that, you know, we think that we should check out, you know, contact coaches in that area. Um, you know, coach contact is usually one of the biggest ways that we do learn about players. Um, so, you know, that's, that's usually the process that we, that we um, go through. And then, you know, once we've determined, um, you know, which athletes to go after, we, we then determine, you know, how much we need to see of them, um, how much games we need to go to, um, you know, stuff like that. All right, give me one more second. We're loading up some more questions here. How do you make contact? Oh, we answered that one already, didn't we? Have you guys done any mentorship programs, especially or events locally for young players based basically teaching them to prepare for the next level uh, we, we haven't done any formal uh mentorship programs we have received calls or emails from from um you know young people coming up trying to get into the sports business or whatever it is in the sports field asking for advice and we're always open to discussing with them um whether they're from the vi or not um, discussing with them what kind of options they have or how we went about doing what we did. So, you know, if anyone wants to ask any questions like that, we're always open to that. Um, and then as far as events, you know, when, like we discussed earlier, some of our clients have clinics and different things like Jabari Blash, for example, comes to mind. You know, we try to get involved with his organization um, to help in any way that we can um, for, for the kids in the Virgin Islands. I, one of the biggest questions you're ever going to be asked in your life has just been asked on the live stream. <laughs> if provided, would you, if provided with the opportunity, would you like, sorry, say this again. If provided with the opportunity, would y'all be interested in working with live wire sports? Uh, definitely. I mean, a hundred percent, um, you know, I, I've been a fan of what you guys have been doing. I mean, I've, I've talked with, you know, Lorena and Shane before, um, you know, just letting them know, you know, how you know, excited I am to see what it is they're doing, um, you know, especially, you know, where they started from um, to where they are now. Um, you know, growing up, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we wish we had uh, and that were different from when we were playing in, in terms of, you know, nobody was, you know, really keeping stats. Nobody was was providing, you know, video um, video of games and stuff like that to send off to, to, to college scouts or coaches and, and to see, 
uh, Live Wire Sports being, you know, being a part of that and, and, and kind of spearheading that, uh, you know, providing opportunities for VI athletes, you know, promoting them, uh, you know, providing opportunities like this for, for even, you know, agents like us to, to come in and talk and, you know, uh, you know, get in front of, 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 of people to, to understand what it is we do. Um, you know, I, I would really want to say that, you know, you guys are doing a great job, um, you know, keep it up. And you know, if there's any way that we could help in, in any way, I know, you know, we'd both be down to do that. How about you, Duff? Anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, what you guys are really accomplishing is is almost like an agency. You guys are like a, the Virgin Islands athletes agent because you guys literally push all the athletes from the Virgin Islands to the forefront. You provide a platform for them to be recognized for their talent, for their abilities to be showcased in, in ways that in the past hasn't been done. Obviously, it's been done on, you know, an individual level or like teams traveling abroad or whatnot. But you've used social media and technology to push the VI athlete across the world, literally. Um, and to me, that's that's huge. That's huge. Like I said, you know, growing up, there weren't many opportunities like that. And, and for you guys to be doing something like this, we, we'd more than love to, um, you know, work with you guys however we could to um, continue to, to promote your mission and, and your goals. All right, thanks a lot. We definitely appreciate um, the kind words and that we're being noticed for doing something we love. We just want to make sure that we can get um, the kids opportunities to play in college, to get a free education. So we're doing all that we can and we see that you guys are doing it as well. And that's the key, just pushing forward and giving them the outlet they need to get to that next level. All right, any last, you guys want to give any last words to our, um, our community, especially the children, about um, just preparing for the next level and sticking to what they want to do in life? Kelsey, you can go first. Um, yeah, um, you know, well, uh, you know, just before we go, you know, thank thank you guys, Live Wire Sports, for having us. Uh, thank you, Shaq, for for you know, great question, you know, great hosting this event. Um, you know, everybody else who was involved in, in putting this together, um, you know, really do appreciate it and thank you for your hard work. Um, to the you know anybody out there listening, whether it be you know kids, even you know adults, um, you know, you you want to find you know what you're passionate about um and pursue that. Um, you know, before we started this, um, we had never heard of you know VIA sports agents. Um, we, we didn't really meet anybody who had heard of any VI sports agents. Um, I, I know we probably got a few, you know, questions of people like, you know, who are these guys? Yeah, they're really going to be sports agents. Um, but, you know, we we had our blinders on, you know, we trusted each other. Um, we had a great support system and we, we really just stuck with it. Uh, you know, there are a lot of, you know, tough nights, but, you know, perseverance um, and determination can really car carry you far. So, you know, in anything that you do, you want to make sure that it's something that you really want. And if it is, then you want to put, you know, a hundred percent, you want to go all in, you, you know, you want to do everything that you can uh, to accomplish your goals. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's just something that, you know, I want to leave with, you know, you know, kids playing sports or, you know, just anybody out there, you know, adult kids, whatever. Any last words from you, Dufferin? Absolutely. So I, I would say for, you know, in life period, you know, set achievable goals, um, work hard towards those goals, make sure you're networking and, um, providing people with your brand and, and so they know who you are and then be authentic and, and just go for your dreams. Truthfully, life, life is too short to settle for anything less than what you want. So just push forward um, and, and do you know what, what you want to do with your life. So. All right, once again, we want to thank you gentlemen for coming on the show. Um, can you give your contact information one more time and the name of your company in case anybody would like to reach out to you guys? Sure, it's uh, All In Sports and Entertainment. Um, we're located in Charlotte, North Carolina. And the best way to get in touch with us is contact at allinse.com. That's C-O-N-T-A-C-T -T at A-L-L-I-N-S as in Sam, E as in Edgar, dot com. I right, once again, thank you, gentlemen, for coming out. We really appreciate it. You gave some valuable information here for our viewers tonight. Thanks for having us. Hey, thanks for having us. All right, next week on Between the Lines will be our guest, Jeff Young, the assistant head coach at Old Dominion University for football, all right? That will be a good, interesting show, a different platform that we um, have been experiencing lately to see a football coach on as well. Um, we want to make sure that we shout out our sponsors today, Leo the Third Sibley, again, for our introduction music. 
He is great. Um, if you're looking for him on social media, his handle is third, T-H, the number three, R-D. He provided an intro track for us, which is called Born Ready, which is on all streaming platforms that you may use. We also want to give a shout out to Dreamland Clothing. If you're looking for their merchandise, you can find it on dreamlandclothing.com as well as their Dreamland Clothing Facebook page. Once again, our next guest is going to be Jeff Kamisiang, Old Dominion Assistant Head Coach. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Between the Lines.